SpongeBob SquarePants is a genius, and Squidward is actually nice. At this time of day, people attest SpongeBob SquarePants series as a stupid and degenerating children's show. It's a cartoon made for laugh. Of course, you cannot be serious about it. People said that the series are utterly dumb with its lame jokes and sometimes questionable one. But I found it funny in my preschool year. I don't know why parents are strict about it and not letting us watch them. I'd say I'll figure out myself. I was watching a video essay by Karsten Reinquist's SpongeBob Darkest Episode on YouTube and I thought, hey, that's right. The depiction of SpongeBob has been too harsh over time. SpongeBob SquarePants is just a shallow and very superficial take on life on a cartoon made for children. The packaging was surely funny and very easy to catch on. You may not know other plot lines than Patrick being a pink starfish that has a wood plank on its head, or that you need another lagoon inside a sea, and that all the fish are walking, not swimming, around the jellyfishes. But hey, it's a cartoon made for love. Of course you want your kids to laugh at those jokes. As I recall back to my year of watching those cartoons, kudos to the animation producer for making that series. In one way or another, Spongebob has made its way breaking person-based human-like characters like Ben 10, Jimmy Neutron, The Simpsons, or animal-based cartoons like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, or Three Bear Bears. Its peculiar choice to choose a sponge living under the sea inside pineapple was very obscure to adults' rational eyes. But for children, it's a fantasy. My imagination was like, hey, if a square yellow sponge can live under the sea, maybe a girl could live under the sea too, without having a tail, like a mermaid. Reinstated from SpongeBob SquarePants Wikipedia page, Steven Hillenburg was fascinated by marine life and so he began to study marine science. What made the series interesting is the range of characters that SpongeBob presents is widely intricate. You got different shapes and voices, not to mention colors. You don't have to be a pale-skinned, redhead mermaid to be just like Larry the lifeguard. You don't have to be a damsel in distress to be a cynical octopus called Squidward. You may have questioned that in the early years of your school year, what characters of SpongeBob are the best, but to be honest, you cannot choose. It's an all-rounded performance. Just like the general interpretation of Seven Deadly Sins, it's a tight look of multiple personalities at once. You got a descriptive carnal human nature in one season. You got a greedy snarky red crab, a happy-go-lucky and childlike yellow sponge, a dense but cheerful pink starfish, a cynically languid grey octopus, envious sly green plankton, a prideful brown squirrel in an ostrand suit and a love to it always eating snail. On Ron Quiz's video essay, it explored on an episode of SpongeBob where Squidward has just to flee to a community full of other octopuses, or Squidville. With notorious feeling in mind because its beloved house was destroyed, Squidward entered the facility where octopuses can live normally without any disturbance. However, its repetitive routine brings consequences, another monotonous life that Squidward tries hard to live. Yes, Squidward did get what it wanted at the first encounter, but then Spongebob and Patrick's funny antics grows on it too. Well, Squidward was willing to get out of the village since Squidward also missed him, <coughs> his old lifestyle. If we want to take a philosophical perspective on this, I agree that most of the times people like the passions to embrace the life they carry on. Everything needs to be in control, everything needs to be in the perfect sync, everything has to be euphoric and that's why we always dream of utopia universe. But you cannot control what you can't control or what you can't have, just like stoicism idea. Let me say this again that this is an oversimplified look on stoicism. But it is just us to control what you can control, like emotions and daily life routines. On the flip side, you cannot control others' behaviors. It teaches us to balance things out so that we don't get carried away by worldly hubris. Squidward wants that stable lifestyle without having to live between 
nosy neighbors, but it cannot control the fact that SpongeBob regards it as a good friend to Noi. Squidward may not have the best anger tolerance of all, but he always finds a way to busy itself. It may look unhappy at a glance, but Squidward is always moving on, sticking to its life, bearing every kind of life hurdles that's being thrown at it. Through this view, Squidward's life is settled, and Squidward is bearing a perseverance that other characters don't. Just look at the best episode of Spongebob chosen by Nerdstalgic's YouTube channel, The Pizza Delivery, in which we can watch Squidward and Spongebob's opposite personality came to light, and with that, we also notice how Squidward stands out for Spongebob. Such a best friend behavior. General reviews are pretty high, meaning Spongebob Squarepants is not even a bad series. I guess we take Spongebob Squarepants for granted, just like we value anything in life, in its surface level. Thanks for watching this video, and see you on the next one. Cheers!